As was mentioned at the start, and as some of you already know from a previous time when I was honored to be here, my name is Chris Odie. It's butchered Norwegian for context. It should have that slash through the O. And I'm honored to serve as the pastor of what is known as the Living Stones Prison Congregation. I'm not going to talk about Living Stones today, partially because I'll be here again next week anyway but also because I think given today's reading and just the context of everything, I want to unpack some of this day with you. First, I'm going to tell you a story. I promise they are connected. I buried a friend yesterday. A classmate of mine at PLU someone who I have known and loved as a dear friend for over half of my life. Camille was 43 when she died, which for the record is too young. It was breast cancer. She'd first been diagnosed three or four years ago, had gone through all the treatments, had done everything right And at one point, we all thought it was contained and things were safe. And then at the end of last summer, in early August, something seemed wrong. And so she and her husband went back in and tests were run and the results came back. And the cancer was back. And the progression from that August to her passing on March 11th of this year was too fast. I was one of the people who was honored to have the space in my life that I could help drive her to her chemo treatments. And as you might guess, this little caller tends to mean that many of the people in my life who I love, even if I'm not their pastor, I'm their pastor. And so on those drives, we had many conversations touching into those things that we as Americans in particular don't like to deal with, the dark stuff, the scary stuff, death in particular. We're optimists as a country for all of our faults. We're optimists, really. It can be so entertaining to speak to someone from abroad. I think in some ways there are portions of the world that look upon us as almost like puppies. Because by and large, we want to move to the, how do we go forward? How do we make things better? The first conversation with Camille when we talked about where things were going or could be going, with the obvious stipulation that we were going to make sure it was way down the road, but that she wanted me to preside at the service, she told me that there would be dancing and karaoke and no crying. And I listened to her say this as we were driving and just kind of thinking about it for a bit. And I said... My friend, I promise you, eventually, there will be those things. But you have to let us grieve first. You have to let us have that. At the service yesterday, there was a lot of grief. There was a lot of grieving. And it was an honor to be a part of that. And then afterwards, a group of us, several dozen, eventually wound up at a brew pub in Tacoma, the Seven Seas, the old Heidelberg brew house. And we stayed for hours laughing and talking and sharing stories and jokes and reminiscing and just being alive and being in love with each other as dear friends who've known each other for so long and have been through so much. In many ways, in that moment, what she wanted, she got. 
but we had to grieve first. And realistically, we're still grieving. And will be for quite some time, if not the rest of our lives. You don't really heal through things. You heal around them, if that makes sense. When we lose someone valued to us, we have this myth that somehow we, we fix it. No. The hole is still there. You figure out how to grow around it. I'm sharing this with you today because this is a time of the church year in which things become kind of... <sighs> scattered. How to handle this transition from Palm Sunday through the crucifixion into the celebration of Easter. I've served several different congregations. I've had the honor of being a guest preacher and many others. And I have learned over time that there is no single way of doing it. There is no necessarily correct way of doing it. But it's important to be done. It's important to take a moment to recognize that going straight from Palm Sunday and the celebration of Jesus' triumph and his entry into Jerusalem and skipping over the crucifixion straight to Easter Sunday doesn't really work. As tempting as that can be. I've learned a lot over the years that you can tell a lot about someone by how they feel about Good Friday and whether or not that should be a thing. Not that it's wrong to want to skip straight ahead. I get it. But that's not how life works. I told you a little bit ago that Thursday is what is known as Maundy Thursday. M-A-U-N-D-Y Thursday. It's my little life's goal to help people understand how that word is actually said. Monday, Thursday. Oh, good grief. Tangent, daylight saving, no S, time. <sighs> also, if you're nauseous, that means you make other people sick. You're nauseated. That's the difference between that. Sorry, now we're on a whole. My OCD manifests in words. In college, I learned that my top three opportunities for employment were pastor, which I said, no, that's not happening. Huh. Psychologist, which I became a psych major, and dictionary editor was the third. <laughs> Mondi Thursday, mandate Thursday. And the reason that matters is because then you have to ask yourself, what is that mandate? What is the thing? What is the core? What was Jesus commanding people? And if you think back and you remember, I give you a new commandment, that you love one another. Jesus commanded us to love the Lord our God with all of our heart, soul, mind, and spirit and to love our neighbors as ourselves. right? Oh, come on, give me a nod if nothing else. And yet, 2,000 years later, we know that that is still a work in progress. Look at the Ukraine. Look at the violence on our own streets. Look at people who are living, what is, I don't even know what we call it anymore. We're not supposed to say homeless, it's unhoused or something. It's, I don't remember, but I, all I know is that there's a lot more of it and now the structures look much more permanent than they used to, which is terrifying. People talk about tent cities and I'm like, have you seen how many of them are built out of scrap wood now? That's a problem. This congregation is proudly affirming of our LGBTQ plus brothers and sisters. And how many out there aren't? I minister in a prison. Thousands of our fellow Washingtonians locked up. I give you a new mandate. We have to include that in our celebration of Easter. We can't go straight from Palm Sunday to the resurrection. We can't skip over 
that. We can't skip over the ugly, the broken, the stuff that we're called to fix, the stuff that we are called to be, as the ELCA says, God's work our hands. If you've ever read a book, if you've ever watched a TV show or a movie, you can't go straight from the beginning, from Act 1 to Act 3, and skip Act 2 when everything falls apart. You can. Much less interesting. When my eldest was really little, we went through this whole period where he didn't like anything with a plot. That's how we referred to it. Anything with conflict, really. Any kind of conflict was too much because he's all heart. I love this kid. So in some churches today, they're just doing Palm Sunday, and that is fine. There's nothing wrong with that. And some of them will have the fancy seminary word, triduum services, on Thursday and Friday and Saturday, and then go into the resurrection on Sunday, and that's great too. And some will go straight from Palm Sunday to Easter Sunday. And I don't say this to judge them, but I do say it to mean, man, I don't believe that's what we're supposed to do. As much as we want to skip ahead, as much as we want to fast forward, as much as we want to just pretend that it is nothing but resurrection glory, we have to remember why that resurrection was necessary, why that promise is needed, and why, by extension, we are commanded, mandated, to live it out. It's not actually that hard to do, to take that moment. Our Muslim brothers and sisters are spending the entire month not eating during the day. I think we can handle a little bit of sitting in the dark. That wasn't intended to be as flippant as some of you might have thought it was. I thank you for letting me be here with you today. I don't usually get to speak anywhere this Sunday or next week because it's very rare that a pastor looks at the calendar and says, yeah, Easter, I'm taking that one off. (laughs) So as much as my heart breaks for you that Sue moved down to Texas, and again, Texas, whoa, whoa. (laughs) I gave her thoughts when she first told me that, I will be honest with you. I'm really honored to be able to be here with you today and next week. And I'm really honored to spend this time with a congregation that is so thoughtful and so deliberate about trying to understand how to balance that tension and how to be those hands of God in this time and this place. Just like my friend Camille yesterday's service There is grief, and there is pain, and there is also that celebration and that recognition that life does go on and that those of us who do so have a role to play and responsibilities to follow and carry out. God loves you. Once we're done here, let's go love the world a bit, okay? Amen.